When you start learning programming, you know that some programs produce the same output but they differ in performance. When you learn about the time space complexity, you know the theory. But oftentimes, people are very curious about the performance even before they know about the time space complexity. Specifically, they want to know how much time a program takes to execute. In this video, I shall introduce you with the time it function from time it module. You can use it to measure the time a statement or function takes to execute. Now let's see some action in the terminal. First we have to import the time it module. And now let me show you an example from the math library which is the sqrt function that calculates square root. So I import the math module first and math.sqrt which is calculating the square root of 25. And we already know that there is another way of calculating square, t, square root of something which is like this. So 25 to the power 0 0.5. And now we shall compare the performance between these two methods. For that we need to call time it dot time it. And here I need to write the code. And let's try to do a list comprehension like this math dot sqrt x x in range 100 so this part is very fast so there is a number parameter which uh, take which takes uh, how many times you should run this but if you don't give anything it should run the this part of this code 100000 times but here we got an error that math is not defined because it hasn't seen math before or it's not really familiar with math. So we need to do setup, import math. And now we call it and it's running. Let's wait for a while. So we got the number, it's 10.29 seconds. Now if I do the other thing, time it dot time it x to the power 0.5 or x in range 100 and as list comprehension so I need to close it and I don't need to do any setup because we are not using any module here so it's running and we saw that it's 8.71 seconds which means that the later method is a bit faster so in this specific use case, you can actually use this uh, system to calculate the square root instead of calling the math.sqrt function, though math.sqrt is more readable. Now we shall see another example. For string concatenation, we are already familiar with, familiar with the plus sign, right? Like if I do a plus b plus c, then we got abc but there is another way of doing it like dot join sorry what it's doing is it's joining all the items of this list and it's same because we didn't specify any separator so it's abc so let's compare the performance of these two code snippets Here I am copy, copying this part. And now let's see the other thing. Yeah, so we see that the join is significantly slower almost 10 times slow, more than 10 times or 14 times actually here slower than the plus method but again the plus is not that readable but when if you really need the performance you can use plus which is absolutely absolutely fine and now we shall see a bigger example if you already started learning programming you know that beginners do calculate prime number which is a very popular example or sometimes exercise the beginner programmers must do 
so let's look at this here this is is prime naive which takes a number n and it will return true or false based on whether it's prime or not so our naive function it first checks if n is less than 2 it means it's not a prime it's false if n is equals to then it returns true which means it is a prime then it tries to divide the uh, divide n by all numbers between 2 to n minus 1 and if it gets any number which can divide n then we return false and we return true here because we couldn't find any i for which this statement line in line 11 is true so that it could return false so we return true here it means it's prime and now you know that there is a smarter way of doing it which is like uh, if it's a, an even number and it's not 2 then it's not really prime when you reach line 22 it means that n is not equal to 2 so n is any other odd number uh, any other even number and then we return false otherwise we get the square root of n and then for, for i in range 3 to uh, square root n plus 1 so that it can run till square root n and then we increment the i by 2 so we divide n by 3 5 7 so and so on and then again same logic if n is divisible by i then it's false and if we couldn't return false then we return true here which means it's prime now just to uh, call those functions i created prime counter knife where it's a range one range from 1 to 100,000 and we call the is prime knife and we calculate how many prime numbers are here and print it and say, similarly we wrote another function called prime counter smart and it's doing the same thing and now here we are calling that time it dot time it from prime counter knife and then time it dot time it prime counter smart and instead of 100,000 times we just want to run this code three times so we set the number parameter as to three and then this is another new thing for you like you can write global equals to global it means all the globals are available so that this prime counter smart prime counter knife all the function are callable here if you don't write it like this you need to import the function individually i showed in the previous example so let's try to run this program and see what happens so it's running after waiting for a while we got the output and here we see that the prime uh, total prime count knife it's printed twice uh, sorry thrice and because we uh, set the number parameter to 3 and it took 88.5 seconds while the prime count smart it uh, it also ran three times but it took only 0 0.3 seconds so you see how different algorithms or different way of implementation can affect your performance and you will be very satisfied when you use the time it dot time it function and this is what i wanted to show you today hope you find it useful and if you want to know more of course you can read the documentation of time it module